Welcome back to another edition of Cleaning Business TV. I'm David Luke, VP of Two Maids and a Mop. And I'm Ron Holt, CEO and founder of that same company, Two Maids and a Mop. <laughs> we are so glad you've come to join us here again today. Uh, we're going to be talking about the power of effective systems in your cleaning business. I know. Are you excited? Oh, yes. Look, I do I operations. I'm definitely excited. <laughs> well, Ron, how do we start off? Well, I think, as usual, it's important for us to go back in the rearview mirror and look at how we started as a company, because there's a lot of people out there that are in the same shoes that we were in uh, 10, 11 years ago. Uh, initially, I didn't know what the word system even meant, and I, I, I was the uh, prototypical small business owner. I flew by the seat of my pants, mm -hmm. and we did that for a very long time, and we winged it. And we hoped and prayed and crossed our fingers. Um, and in some cases, it worked out. In some cases, it didn't. Um, most importantly, most of the things we were doing, I, we call them systems today, but most of the things we were doing at that time were all right here. And we'll get to that down the road and during this episode. But um, systems are absolutely important. They not only save your business money, but in some cases, they actually make your business money. In fact, I'll talk about two specific examples within our own business that should be pretty um, uh, shocking, maybe alarming to you. Uh, but we did a study a few years ago, I hired a consultant who came in and uh, they estimated that we were losing about $100,000 per year what? Uh, with inefficient cleaning systems. Now, when I say inefficient cleaning systems, what does that mean? And basically, how to clean a house. Uh, we were taking too long, we were using um, the wrong equipment slash supplies, mm -hmm. uh, too, one person may be uh, on one side of the house while the other person's on the other side of the house. All sorts of things were, were you know, kind of coming together to create that $100,000 worth of uh, costliness uh, mm -hmm. within our company. And, uh, you know, when you're in the middle of this, 15 minutes here, 30 minutes there, five minutes maybe, doesn't seem like a big deal in terms of money. But it, when you look at it over the course of 12 months, 52 weeks, it certainly adds up. And in our case, it was six figures. So uh, it changed our business once we really start got serious about systems. But maybe that's too big for you to uh, think about. So there's another system that's a little bit more uh, easy to understand, and it's just buying supplies, going mm -hmm. to uh, wherever you go to get the supplies. And in our case, in the early days, um, you know, I, I've made fun of my green truck before, but man, that thing came in handy. Um, you had to buy supplies. I had to buy supplies, and it had a big old bed in the back. And uh, we lived in a, we operated in such a small, well, I can't call it a small town because I'm from a small town and Pensacola, Florida isn't that small, but it was small enough that we could get around pretty quickly. So I knew where the supplies were located, in, in other words, what stores they were being sold in, and I knew prices at every one of these stores, and I knew which one was the cheapest. And for me, it, it was all about my time, so I didn't really value my time that uh much at the time because everything was more direct in your face in terms of cost, cost and the cost savings from it. So I would spend hours, some, in some cases a half a day, just buying these supplies. And of course, I'd come back to the office and be piled up with supplies. And I'd pat myself on the back and go, man, I love saving money. Look at what I've done today. I've saved 50, 75 bucks. But what really was happening is absolutely directly saved 50 to $75 probably every single time I did this. Indirectly, I was losing my butt. I mm -hmm. needed to be inside that office. I needed to be figuring out a way to get more business, saving money, hiring another person, doing something productive and effective so that we could make way more than 50 to 75 bucks. Think about it. As an owner of your business, do you want to spend three, four hours a day to make 50 bucks? 50 bucks? No, you don't want to do that. Um, so when we created a system for actually purchasing supplies, that not only saved us money, but it made us money. And so... Yeah, we still don't use your Ford Ranger and you drive every... We have 13 locations, hundreds of miles apart, so that would be interesting if you're actually... That's my wife's fault. Driving your Ranger to every place. Yeah. Man, and when I would drive down that road, you should see all the looks I would get. Wait, good ones? Bad <laughs> ones? <laughs> <laughs> so, David, let's back up for and talk about systems, yeah. because in some cases, you guys may be thinking, what are they even talking sure. about? What is a system? A, a system easily is a process by which an organization simply gets things done. That's it. It's the process by which you get anything done. Now, for me, I was hired as the VP of operations here at Two Maids and Mop. And when I arrived, actually, Two Maids and Mop had a lot of systems. Mm -hmm. They had moved from Ron's truck. They had moved to doing all kinds of different things. The interesting thing, though, was guess what? 
all the systems within our company and two maids and might was where? In his head. So guess what? It was, it was, okay, well, how do we do this? Oh, I know, it's right here. Mm-hmm. Well, we had 160 employees, and nobody else knew what a, the system was or how we hired or how we did this or how we did this because he just kept them all in his mm-hmm. head and said, if anybody needs to know, you can just ask me. Now, that's funny because most businesses will start off that way. The initial founder, the owner will develop all these ideas that are great and wonderful and just store them right there in his head. And then every phone call, guess what? Guess where every phone call will have to get to? You. Well, every concern will have to get to you. In order to build systems, you have to get out of that individual, you, just yourself, knowing that business. So that was part of my job, getting those things in his head, on paper, into a system, systemized approach to a cleaning business. And now, and, and now that all that information is out of my head, I have so much more free time inside my head to watch reality TV with my wife, watch cartoons with my son, so much more productive. Does she like more free time? Oh, that's, hey, Rachel, do you? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and watching Clean the Business TV. As that's well. right. Sure, you've got more time to watch We've us. got at least several hundred views on the internet right now. Several hundred? Yeah, and about 150 probably nice. from my, me watching Sure, this. sure. <laughs> anyway. And your mom. <laughs> Say, hey, mom. Hey, hey mom. mom. <laughs> most cleaning businesses don't understand systems. Mm-hmm. Heck, most businesses don't understand systems and don't even have good ones in place. So if you're one of those businesses, if you're out there and you do not have systems in place and you have it all right here in your mind, what should you do? Do this first. Document what you are doing now. Then ask yourself two important questions. What are the things that are working? What are the things that are not working? With systems, realize that you are never done. You are never complete. Systems always evolve. You need to know what it is that you're doing that's working. You need to know, okay, this is working. I want to continue to do this, but write it out on paper so somebody else can know what that is. And also, when you get to the ones that are not working, what should you do with those, Ron? To throw them away. There Start you go. Over. Start over. <laughs> don't be afraid. When, when, when looking at the systems you have in place, don't be afraid to start over in the areas that are not working. And this got me to the, the definition of um, insanity. You know what the definition of insanity? Doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. With systems, you want to have the systems that actually work in place and not continually doing the same thing that is not getting you the right results. So, and it's hard. You know, if you, for, for me, it was hard. When you own a business and you start that business and it's, it's your livelihood and almost like your little baby. You don't want to admit any kind of failure. And in, in some cases, what you're doing is wrong. So a lot mm-hmm. of the stuff you're doing is right, but a lot of the stuff you, you're doing may be wrong. So you're going to have to have some humility here because there are going to be some things you're doing right now, even if it's up here, mm-hmm. that you need to completely change and, and redirect. Sure. So, you know, I think a great idea, David, um, is to talk about just one of our systems. And we've got okay. 400 plus pages of nothing but systems that we've developed. And, and it's a great read. It's awesome. Easy, Land. light read. I, did, I would advise reading that thing sometime around 10, 1030 at night. Sure. Mm. Turn all the lights off. Right. It, it just keeps you up all night. So, <laughs> you know what's great about TV is we get to laugh at ourselves. Right. And, I've all, and then when you watch it back, it, you, you get to laugh Do you again. Th- are they laughing? No. Okay. Except my mother and wife. Sure. So, and yours, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> but ser- in all seriousness, there, there are tons and tons of systems, hundreds of systems that we have that make up two maids and a mop. Mm-hmm. And obviously don't have time to go through each one of those, but I felt like it'd be a really cool idea to just break one apart, to really show you the uh, story behind the system and how we put it together and what it's doing now to make our business more effective sure. and, and saving us money as well. L- let's just go over one. It's the arrival and departure of an unoccupied home. And before you go there, I'm sorry, David. What? Unoccupied home, remember that. So remember what we're, do- we're about to talk about here. There is another system after this for the same exact thing for an occupied home. That's right. So these systems, when you start diving into systems management, they're all over. There's, it's very extensive. So right. you're going to get bogged down, but don't get scared. That's right. Okay. So just for ex- instance, uh, the, the unoccupied home, what do you do? I mean, from step one, step two, step three, we're actually going to show this to you because Arriving at a customer's home, uh, verifying their address from the customer uh, before ever parking at their home, 
You need to do that upon arrival. You need to check the job sheet entry for notes or the keys. Make sure you have all that information. Uh, you need to unload supplies. You need to unload the equipment. Now, some of this stuff, you're, you're thinking, duh, this is easy. I, of course, I would know this. But we're trying to make every system for not just you, but for every person that comes uh, to be a part of your business, understand exactly step by step what you're doing. So that's, of course, step four, not before uh, using an entry method provided by uh, management. You need to do that. And, and we've instructed all of our professional house cleaners to do that. Use the number key, announce yourself. Hello, uh, my name is this with two maids and mop. We have systemized every single little detail. And you may think, well, this is easy for me. But we want to make it again, take it from your head that you have so that every single person, uh, rich, poor, smart, um, uh, you name it, is able to walk through these steps, walk through every detail of how to clean a home. And in this case, how to clean an unoccupied home correctly into every detail. So what does that do, though? What is what is documenting all that, getting all that on paper? What does that do? Systems save you money. Mm -hmm. that, that They will save you money in the long run once every employee in your organization knows exactly they can refer to a system you have. It's written down on paper. They can verify it. It will save you money in the wrong, long run. It'll save you time mm -hmm. as well. And it also will allow you to, the ability to sell your business in the future. We hadn't even thought about that. But the business, with any business, you make money two ways. While you have the business, so that's one, because systems are going to save you money while you have the business. So you make that off dividends or royalties within the business. Secondly, you make money from your business when you sell it. Mm -hmm. And when you have systems in place that are clearly spelled out, then a new buyer can come in and say, you know what? I get it. I get it. I get what you're trying to sell. I get what product you're trying to do. I completely understand it because you have everything from A to Z spelled out. Yeah. I mean, there's... No easier thing to think about than other than money when it comes to your business. Right. And systems, as boring as they sound, absolutely make you, make and save you money. Mm -hmm. and, you're, and David's right. You're never, ever going to be able to sell your business if it can only run with you there. That's right. It's, you've got to have systems in place. So, so now that we know what a system is, mm -hmm. we know the importance of a system, we know, understand that it saves, and, saves us money, in some cases makes us money as a business owner, mm -hmm. How do you go about actually making this making making and documenting these systems for your business? Well, the first you can do it yourself, mm -hmm. right? That's easy. You can do it yourself. You can, um, you know, put all everything we've said to, to this point. You can do that all yourself. Secondly, you, you, you've, you've got to test it. Sure, you've got to get out there and make sure they work. Okay, and then you got to start documenting those systems. So, as a small business owner, it's much easier to do that early on mm -hmm. than as you grow uh, and you're all of a sudden a multi-million dollar business. In our case. Unfortunately, I did have a lot of those systems inside my head, and we were no longer a small business before we understood the true value of systems management. So we had to use option number two mm -hmm. to build our systems. And that's getting a systems consultant. So you can do it yourself, or you can hire an outside system consultant. Now that takes somebody sitting in not just a, an hour or two. That's somebody sitting with you for a week, maybe even a month, to learn the ins and outs of your business and then give you advice on how to build systems within that business. Or the third option, which I love. Mm, this is going to sound This one so hits home good. for me. Yes. You can actually buy a Two Maids and a franchise that already has all the systems in place. Da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. That's right. Two Maids and a franchising. That's right. Call us. <laughs> so, you know, that's the essence of franchising. There's, there's two right. things you purchase when you purchase a franchise. And just bear with me here because I'm, I'm not going to go on a sales rant here. But the reality is there are two reasons to buy a franchise. One, the name, the trademark brand, right. and, and then the systems. If, That's right. If the business doesn't have systems, then there's no really reason to buy the franchise. And the same goes for your business, even if mm -hmm. you're not a franchise. We talked about it. To sell that business, you've, you've got to have systems. To, to open a franchise, that franchise or has to have systems. Mm -hmm. And even to sell that franchise business, that's going to provide more value to the franchisee because the next person that buys it understands that it is a franchise and sure. it has proven systems and they work. Mm -hmm. So you've got to get serious about systems. Hopefully we've given you some information uh, and some um, uh, insight on, on how to make those systems work inside your own business. But I, I really want to end with one really cool quote um, that I think will really help everybody out there. Uh, and it's really worked for, for David and myself. At the end of the day, you 
cannot be more important than your business. Now, that's going to be a tough pill to swallow for a lot of small business owners because even for me, you want to own that business. You want to own everything about it. And that includes the not only the money, but the, but the reputation of being the business owner, but the knowing the guts of the business. I loved having all that information in my head, but I was more important than the business. And that was a problem for us. That really created some real growing pains for us. But you cannot be more important than your business. Mm -hmm. and, and if you want that for yourself, it's going to be very difficult for you to make that business grow to the level it needs to grow. Yeah, totally agree. Well, thank you so much for joining us again on Cleaning Business TV and learning about systems. We hope to see you next week. I'm David Luke. Ron Holt. See you next time. Bye-bye.